theory of constraint is one of those important topics the reason behind that is that this topic is covered not only in this chapter but it will be useful for you in your decision making chapters it will be useful for in your relevant costing it will be useful in transfer pricing pricing policy all those chapters this concept will be applicable and useful see when it comes to just in time system just in time life cycle costing what we went through or uh, total quality management questions what we went to that those are the questions where we we were asked that if what if this proposal is accepted or followed or implemented what if just in time is followed what would be the situation what if my quality control or total quality management is followed what would be the situation right and the proposal should be accepted or not give the reasons what are kind of cause so this questions has a limitations but when it comes to theory of constraint questions it doesn't has a limitation because this question can be asked from in the view of this context or this concept can be asked in different chapters also right so this is not a kind of a mechanism or a kind of proposal that we need to accept this is a kind of constraints uh, theory what we need to understand so what is theory of constraints let us understand that first see theoretically if you understand then in 1980 goldrax and cox goldrax and cox this is important advocated new approach called optimized production technology optimized production technology is based on principle that profits are expanded by increasing the throughput of the plant right so this are the important words for theoretical understanding of theory of constraints but before we understand this uh, important or theoretical understanding let us understand the concept or practicals uh, behind this see the word itself says that theory of constraints means there is there are some constraints whose theory we going to learn right what are theory of constraints like in layman's language if you understand that if i have one machine and out of that one machine if i am producing three products if i have one machine and out of that one machine if i am producing three products right so basically all the three products require different labor hours or machine hours correct now a machine hour has a constraint a machine hour has a constraint the reason being that is i cannot use machine hours beyond one certain point of time say for example in a day you can use a machine only for 24 hours right so in a month you can only use for 24 hours into 30 days so i have a constraint in machine hours now my product a or product 1 product a product b product c product a takes two machine hours product b takes three machine hours product c takes one machine hours right so different machine hours are been assigned to different products this different products give different kind of profits or different kind of contributions so when it comes to the implementation of machine hours you may feel that one product is giving me more profits or more contribution so my production should be on the basis of that product my priority should be that product because the contribution in that product is very high that is what you learned in ipcc right so which is the product which is giving a more contribution so what you do is sales minus variable cost you get contribution per unit and which product is giving benefits or which product is giving more contribution according to that contribution you apply your answer that this is the highest contribution we should have this productions or this unit should be sold highest but when it comes to machine hours we need to evaluate how many machine hours are required for that product and can i implement this that if number of machine hours are required for that product are given and i divide that contribution per unit with number of machine hours do i have higher rate of contribution per machine hour because my machine hour are constrained see i'll give you one of those another example to understand this practically if you if you understand this way that there is a labor right correct and this is what constraint machine hour constraints or this theory of constraint you use in your exams also till now even you are doing this in your exams also when you are preparing for any chapters right see if i have a labor first of all i i need to write down the heading theory of constraints right now suppose i have a product a product b selling price of product a is 100 variable cost selling price is 100 minus variable cost is 80 so i get contribution of 
right i have product c product b let us suppose its selling price is 90 variable cost being 60 my contribution is 30 so now what we do is that if understanding this my b product i would produce the maximum because it gives me 30 rupees of contribution that is the highest profit that i am earning 30 rupees but when it comes to labor hours suppose or machine hours i am saying labor hours means or i instead of using labor hours i would use student hours uh, which do respect to you people student hours if we talk about you need to give one hour to manufacture product a you need to give two hours to manufacture product b now in a day how many maximum hours do you have sir maximum number of hours available available 24 hours what maximum you have in a day right so if for 24 hours if you work product a if you work for one hour in product a you work for two hour in product b and because of two hour working product b it gives me profit of 30 per contribution per unit and 20 contribution i get in a so can i say how much is contribution per hour the contribution per hour is 20 divided by 1 is 20 and over here is 15 so if i consider my efforts for product a and pro product b my efforts in product a are less and contribution is higher per hour but my efforts in product b are more as a contribution per unit is higher but my efforts are way more higher and because of that my contribution per hour decreases to 15 rupees right now if you ask me sir you have six hours say for example right sir you have six hours to do i would definitely manufacture a sir why a because six hours if i put for a i will be able to manufacture six units six units will give me 20 rupees contribution per unit that my profit will go to 120 but if i put my six hours for product b i will be able to manufacture only three units and three units of product b will give me 90 rupees 33 is a 90 right so then in that case if i have 24 hours first of all i will manufacture try to manufacture as many as a it is possible right so basically i would manufacture 24 a 24 a because one hour will take one for every manufacturing of product a it requires one hour 24 hours 24 a i will produce if the moment i produce 24 a my contribution will be 24 into 20 but then b sir b i would not produce because putting producing b requires two hours so the contribution per unit so the picture if you see if you see a picture before this contribution per hour you go for contribution per unit you feel b is way more profitable so b should produce but when it comes to contribution per hour my 20 and 15 I need to understand that 20 according to that A should be produced. So B is to be cancelled and A is to be manufactured. Right. So this is known as theory of constraint. Where my constraint is number of hours. If I have constraint in number of hours. Where I will do effective utilization of hour. To have as the Goldrax and Cox said. That to have a optimized production to have optimized production technology what is the optimized production that you would do i would manufacture a first as many as possible now <coughs> if the demand of product a is only 16 units if the demand of product a is only 16 units then i would make sure that first 16 hours is given to product a theory of constraint allocate your first 16 hours to product a the moment you allocate that after that the remaining hours i will produce b so rev out of 24 my remaining hours are 8 hours uh, that 8 hours i will give to product b 2 hours per unit 4 units i will manufacture of b and 16 units i will manufacture of a right so 16 into 20 plus 4 into 30 that is the maximum profit what i can earn I cannot earn profit beyond that. That is the maximum profit I can earn. Sir, why don't you manufacture all the way B? See, if I put this example, if I have 24 hours and 16 is the production demand of A, what I said, can I say I will manufacture 16 units of A into 20 per unit is my contribution plus I will manufacture <coughs> 
फोर यूनिट ऑफ बी फोर यूनिट ऑफ बी इन टू थर्टी इज माई कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन पर यूनिट राइट दिस प्रॉफिट विल बी द वे हायर कंपेयर टू एनी अदर प्रॉफिट यू कंपेयर बिकॉज इफ प्रोडक्ट डिमांड इफ आई राइट डाउन ओवर हियर प्रोडक्ट डिमांड इज सिक्सटीन यूनिट्स फॉर ए और बी वॉट एवर इट इज राइट देन वॉट वुड स्टूडेंट फील दैट ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मैन्युफैक्चर बी आई वुड मैन्युफैक्चर बी दिस इज प्लान वन प्लान टू सर एज वी हैव हाइएस्ट मैन यूनिट्स रिक्वायर्ड सिक्सटीन एंड बी इज द हाइएस्ट अर्निंग प्रॉफिट पर यूनिट लेट एस मैन्युफैक्चर सिक्सटीन फर्स्ट बी फर्स्ट हाउ मेनी बी यू कैन प्रोड्यूस इन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स so 24 hours you are be two so can i say i can manufacture only 12 units of a sorry 12 units of b 12 units of b into 30 per unit if i have 24 hours then what can you do you need to either you follow a that is 16 units you do 16 hours completed either you follow b 12 units on 24 hours and that is completed 12 into 30 if you do this comes to 360 right this comes to 16 into 20 320 And plus 120. This comes to 440. Any day your profits would be higher when you're comparing with Plan A. Sir, let us not do this way. We can manufacture uh, some units of B, some units of A. Yes, you may do that. But then how you decide? So then what you do is you keep on doing for individual plan. If one unit of B is produced two hours, then I will have 22 hours. So 22 units of A. That is not possible because A demand is only 16 units. so you have to produce minimum 4 units of b so then what you can do is plan c plan 3 that is sir we can do this way 4 units of b of b into 30 per unit right so then remaining hours how much it can have 16 hours over here so 16 units of a because a you cannot manufacture more than 16 because total demand is 16 so then if the moment you say that i will produce one more unit of this this will become 5 so this becomes 14 right this becomes 6 this becomes 12 because the moment you say that sir i will evaluate which is more beneficial then you have only two plans either you go more with a a you manufacture 16 and you manufacture 4b or you manufacture all the way b because 30 per unit is the highest plan that you getting in b or you keep on doing this trial error 4 of b then 4 16 of a i cannot manufacture 16 more than 16 of a so 16 of a is the limit so 5 of b uh, 14 of a 6 of b 12 of a right so keep on doing that 7 over here 7 to the 14 hours so this will require 10 Eight of this, sixteen hours. So this will become eight. Nine of this, eighteen hours. So this will become six. Ten of this, twenty hours. This will become four. Eleven of this. So this will become two. Twenty-two plus two, and twelve of this already you calculated. Any time you calculate this profit into thirty. You will never get. profit more than 440 it is not at all possible any calculation you do see i can start 11 from 30 from the back if i start 11 30 how much it comes to 330 2 into 20 40 330 and 40 is 370 right then you go for 10 into 30 300 4 into 20 that is 80 this will give you 380 then you again go up 9 into 30 270 Six into twenty, one twenty. This will go with three ninety. Sir, it is increasing, increasing. We will go four forty. Happen, happen. Let us calculate. Eight into thirty, thirty into eight, two forty. Eight into twenty, one sixty, four hundred. Sir, it is increasing, increasing. Let us increase. Make sure. Seven into thirty, two hundred and ten. Ten into twenty, it comes to four hundred. Four hundred and ten. Sir, again it is increasing. Let us go forward. Six into thirty, one eighty. Twelve into twenty, two forty. Two forty plus one eighty. For it is increasing. Let us go more. Five into thirty, one fifty. Twelve in fourteen into twenty, two eighty. Two eighty plus one fifty, four thirty. Sir, it is increasing. Let us go more. Four into thirty, 
120. 16 into 20. 320. So this comes to again you come to the same situation. So this 440 is the highest. What is this 440 situation? That is what plan A what you have wrote. 16 units into A. 16 units of A. 4 units of B. So you will never get profit beyond 440 at any case. So this is how theory of constraint was implemented. How the theory of constraint was implemented that first of all whatever your constraints are make sure you do effective utilization or optimum utilization of those constraints. So in your IPCC contribution per unit a question stops there. In CA final contribution per unit is mere a starting point because then you have what further is constraints. And then when I evaluate on the basis of constraints, I come to know that what is my contribution per hour. And highest paying contribution per hour is known as the point where I will earn the highest profits. That is how my effective or productive utilization of my product will happen. And that is the reason why this theory of constraint was implemented. Theory of constraint. Colrat and Cox, important word 1980, what you need to understand. Optimize production technology, the important word that you need to understand. The optimized approach determines what prevents throughout throughput being higher by distinguishing between bottleneck and non-bottleneck resources. See, this is again important word. Bottleneck and non-bottleneck resources. This approach advocates, means advises that bottleneck resource or activity should be fully utilized while non-bottleneck activity should not be utilized to 100% of their capacity since it would result to increase in inventory. Sir, what is bottleneck, non-bottleneck that we will discuss? OTP, or, uh, sorry, OPT that is optimized production uh, technology is based on principle that profits are expanded by increased throughput of the plant. What is the this throughput word? See, there is a throughput accounting concept. Now what is throughput accounting concept? It is a performance measurement plans. Your accounting is be done on the basis of your performance measurement. Now I will explain what is throughput and what is bottleneck, non-bottleneck activities. Understand. The term bottleneck, how was this term bottleneck was used? See whenever you have a bottles, right? The water in that bottle, the fulfilled water in that bottle is way more than what you pill that bottle down, right? So the moment you pill that bottle down, the water that flows out of that bottle will, will be much lesser and will be much lower in the quantity than what it is in the bottles. Because the neck of the bottles are always lower compared to their body parts, agreed? So our bottles normally our bottles are normally shaped like the neck this is the necks of the bottle and normally they are shaped in this way normally I am saying right I don't know what kind of bottles you understand whatever you see so this kind of this the quantity what we have in the bottles when you pill this bottle down this is the bottleneck what is used right so the resources in the bottle the resources in the bottle will be used effectively or will be used gradually with the ink with your bottleneck resources because the neck of that bottle is lower you cannot use all the resources at one time together right now as my bottleneck resources is what the resources which are in lower consumption the resources where my i have some scarcity the resources where i have to make sure that proper effective utilization of those resources are done those are known as bottleneck resources right so as these are known as bottleneck resources these are the resources which are in constraint which are in constraint the reason why they are in constraint is like we as yes, there is a bottleneck resource being this bottleneck we have only this much of quantity to use we have only this much of production or we have only have this much of material to use that is why this is known as bottleneck resource right QI a bottleneck resource concept may because of the reason is ki if you have a bottleneck means kuch concepts ya kuch aapke paas material कुछ काम कुछ क्वांटिटीज आपके पास कम है कंस्ट्रेंट्स हैं उसको हम बॉटलनेक एक्टिविटीज या बॉटलनेक बोलते हैं 
the reason why we call it as bottleneck because they are limited in source and as they are limited in source we have to effectively utilize them so like when you are traveling somewhere you pick a water bottle with you you keep on drinking the water bottle but when you come to know that there is this is a constraint now further i will not get a water for next 2 3 hours or 4 hours then you make sure that the proper utilization of that bottle water has been done you do not waste that water right so that is known as theory of constraint those activities where we have a constraint are known as bottleneck activities and as this bottleneck activities comes into scenario make sure that this bottleneck activities are effectively utilized non bottleneck activity means those activities which are higher in numbers we do not have any constraints for them we are not going to get any scarcity on the basis of them use as much as you can and the more you use the more you use the more you will get there will never be a question of constraint and that is the reason why it says that when it comes to non bottleneck activities it is you should use see what they say that this approach advocates that bottleneck activity should be fully utilized bottleneck activities sorry bottleneck activities should be fully utilized while non bottleneck activities should be not utilized 100% because it would result in increase in inventory because as there is no constraint i will use only that that which is required right the more and more more and more you do keep on doing non bottleneck resources your inventory will becoming higher anyways you can get whenever you want it there is no question of constraint in that constraint comes only when when there is a bottleneck resource bottleneck resource if the constraint comes i have to make sure that effectively fully utilization of those resources has been done so when if you say in this example itself instead of labor if i give you example of material right that we have two products product a and product b material used in product a is 1 kg material used in product b is 2 kg right let us suppose pens right in pens you need plastics refills for refills you need inks and cotton uh, whatever the things you understand so when it comes to ink when it comes to plastics i have plenty of plastics available so i can manufacture product a i can manufacture product b as much as on the basis of that plastics so that plastic becomes non bottleneck activities because you have plenty available but when it comes to ink we have a bottleneck activity of ink why because in ink there is a constraint i cannot use beyond a certain point of level of ink because the market in the market scenario or in the practical situation i am not been available with the ink so i will make sure that with the limited resource of ink or with the limited stock of ink which is the optimum production that i would follow so i would follow a or b now whenever you follow on the basis of optimum production on the basis of a or b though the demand of my product b in the same example if i am discussing though the demand of my product b is 16 units but due to the theory of constraint i am able to manufacture only 4 units of b right so then the another plastic if i am switching this example to ink and plastic then i will make sure that ink is effectively utilized in 4 units of b so that means i have to make sure that non bottleneck resources that is plastic should not be stocked much because that is mere investment in stock as i am only man able to manufacture 16 units of a and 4 units of b i have to make sure that only stock of 16 units of a and b the requirement of plastic should be done not more than that the more than that you do that is merely investment in inventory and that will increase your inventory and the moment it increase your inventory we have already learned what are the additional cost we incur with the inventories right so considering the bottleneck activities non bottleneck activity should be effective to lies now it comes to throughput accounting throughput means output throughput the word throughput means what output what is your output accounting what does this output accounting means throughput it has a formula over here throughput ratios throughput per bottleneck minute what is this throughput ratio throughput bottleneck minute method of ranking product see again very important method of ranking product that share the same bottleneck facility very similar to the use of contribution per unit of limiting fact method of ranking the ranking what we have done over here right in our i labor example we did a ranking so this method of ranking so this would be my first rank this would be my second rank this method of ranking on the basis of your bottleneck activity would be done it is known as throughput accounting or you call it as 
थ्रू पुट बॉटल नेक पर बॉटल नेक मिनिट वॉट इट इज मेथड ऑफ रैंकिंग प्रोडक्ट दैट शेयर द सेम बॉटल नेक फेसिलिटी वेरी सिमिलर टू द यूज ऑफ कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन पर यूनिट ऑफ लिमिटिंग फैक्टर थ्रू पुट रेशियो वॉट इज थ्रू पुट रेशियो सेवरल रेशियोज वेर डिफेंड बाय गॉलविन एंड वॉलरन बेस्ड ऑन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ थ्रू पुट थ्रू पुट अकाउंटिंग रेशियो इज थ्रू पुट पर बॉटल नेक मिनिट थ्रू पुट पर बॉटल नेक मिनिट डिवाइड बाय फैक्ट्री कॉस्ट पर बॉटल नेक मिनिट नाउ थ्रू पुट पर बॉटल नेक मिनिट मीन कैन आई से दैट इट इज माई कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन पर मिनिट सर हाउ कैन यू से कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन हाउ यू गेट थ्रू पुट पर बॉटल नेक मिनिट थ्रू पुट पर बॉटल नेक मिनिट मीन्स माई टोटल नंबर ऑफ माई कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन पर यूनिट डिवाइड बाय बॉटल नेक मिनिट्स माई कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन पर यूनिट डिवाइड बाय बॉटल नेक मिनिट्स सपोज इन दिस एग्जाम्पल वॉट वी हैव लर्न इंस्टेड ऑफ आवर्स इफ दिस वॉज इंस्टेड ऑफ आवर्स इफ दिस वॉज फॉर मिनिट्स कैन आई से वन मिनिट टू मिनिट सो वॉट इज थ्रू पुट अकाउंटिंग कैन आई से ट्वेंटी रुपीज पर मिनिट वॉट इज थ्रू पुट अकाउंटिंग फॉर प्रोडक्ट बी फिफ्टीन रुपीज पर मिनिट राइट सो दैट इज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन पर मिनिट डिवाइड बाय फैक्ट्री कॉस्ट पर बॉटल नेक मिनिट सर व्हाट इज फैक्ट्री कॉस्ट पर बॉटल नेक मिनिट हाउ मच कॉस्ट यू आर इंकरिंग ऑन दैट प्रोडक्ट पर मिनिट व्हाट इज द फैक्ट्री कॉस्ट दैट यू आर इंकरिंग पर मिनिट सपोज इफ आई एम इंकरिंग कॉस्ट ऑफ फाइव रुपीज पर मिनिट एंड माई कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन पर बॉटल नेक मिनिट इज एट कैन आई से माई थ्रू पुट रेशियो इज वन पॉइंट सिक्स टाइम्स सर 1.6 टाइम्स कैसे आया 5 8 डिवाइड बाय 5 सर 8 डिवाइड बाय 5 क्यों किया कि पर मिनट माय एक्सपेंस इज ऑफ फाइव रुपीज पर मिनट ऑफ बॉटल नेक रिसोर्स माय रेवेन्यू इज एट रुपीज दैट मींस माय रेवेन्यू और माय आउटपुट रेशियो कंपेयर्ड विद कॉस्ट इट इज हाउ मच माय आउटपुट रेशियो कंपेयर्ड विद कॉस्ट इज वन पॉइंट सिक्स टाइम्स दैट इज वॉट वी कैलकुलेट इन थ्रू पुट रेशियोज That is called it was output ratio. So what is throughput per bottle like minute? Throughput per bottle like minute is how much is contribution that you are earning per bottle like minute on the basis of that you do the ranking. So the moment I do ranking, I come to know which is the highest throughput ratio, accounting ratio, uh, bottle like minute. I will start manufacturing that to have effective utilization of my bottle like minutes. Right. If the moment I do start doing effective utilization of bottle like minutes, it means that my highest throughput ratio would be revenues, or you say contribution, or you say earnings per bottle like minute, divided by the cost that you are incurring per bottle like minute. So your contribution towards or your output ratio of that product is higher if your contribution per bottle like minute is higher compared to your factory cost per bottle like minute. so the moment to find out this in our example what we got is 1.6 times the moment to find out okay it is 1.6 times as it is higher more than 1 you should go with the production if it is lower than 1 you should stop the production because your cost is higher to contribution when your cost is higher you are, you have a contribution divided by your factory cost bottom like minute right so when your contribution is higher then factory cost will have more than 1 when your contribution is lower than factory cost will have less than 1 so in case of less than 1 you should stop the production why because that will fetch you to loss this is what we call it as throughput contribution theory of constraint procedure based on identifying bottlenecks that is constraints maximize their use subordinating other facilities to the demand of bottleneck facilities alter alternating bottlenecks and reevaluating the whole system this is what the theory of constraint is so what is throughput contribution equal to sales minus direct cost of material of goods sold this is very important formula the throughput contribution what need to calculate how you need to calculate throughput contribution Through, throughput contribution is your sales minus direct material cost of goods sold only material cost of goods sold would be considered as throughput contribution huh? important very very important because this is where many students make commit uh, mistakes or error right objectives of theory of constraints identify that bottleneck operations locate bottleneck operations maintain bottleneck operations take necessary steps to increase the efficiency of bottleneck operations so you need to remember these four important words identify bottleneck locate the bottleneck maintain the bottleneck necessary steps to increase the efficiency these are the objectives of theory of constraint and then we have theory of constraint uh, what we have said what are the key steps of bottleneck resources 
right basic principle associated with synchronizing systems manufacturing systems what need to maintain all the above uh, questions are of quality management that we already gone through six c's and five p's and all those stuff right six c's of tcm theory of constraint just in time synchronization manufacturing all those concepts are already covered so this is basically theory of constraint theory what we have already gone through right now let us go with one more small example to understand theory of constraint right so theory of constraint let us start with first question number 16 theory of constraint and throughput contribution so let us start with question number 16 to understand this concept of theory of constraints <coughs> 